North Korea isn't anything like its southern neighbour. Apart from having a supreme leader, lack of global internet access, state-run propaganda campaigns, mass food insecurity, starvation, human rights abuses, and a laughable judicial system, two things really set North Korea apart from the rest of the continent. Firstly is the existence of its centrally planned economy, and secondly the global sanctioning of said economy. Two features that don't really set the nation up for very much success. But nothing is more evident of the country's fledgling existence than the presence of its failing electrical grid. North Korea doesn't even need that much power, but what it does need, it doesn't have. This is evident when you compare satellite photos of the Korean peninsula at night, and is a hallmark of the different directions that North and South Korea went in the latter part of the 20th century. Over the last four decades, South Korea's electricity production has risen by 1275% whilst North Korea's rose by a mere 64%. Accompanying this are frequent power outages that get worse in the winter months, a situation where an estimated 74% of the population don't have access to electricity, and those that do are known to face strict restrictions. So how did North Korea's grid reach such a dire state, and why does this situation get worse every winter? In order to understand North Korea's electricity problem, we have to look back at the nation's history, as North Korea's energy problems are almost as old as the nation itself. After the Korean War, what infrastructure the country did have was essentially destroyed, as 85% of the country's buildings were a target of the United Nations Command Forces in the early 1950s. But the Korean Armistice Agreement was signed in July of 1953, and the country could finally begin to rebuild, relying heavily on its Soviet neighbours for assistance to build factories and energy infrastructure like coal power plants and hydroelectric dams. Scholars often cite that without Moscow's help throughout the Cold War, the nation of North Korea would most likely not exist as a nation state today. And this reliance on the Soviet Union shows even when we look at the country's energy infrastructure today. Out of the five largest power stations in the country today, four were created during the 1980s or earlier with either the help of the Soviet Union or China, with only the Taekyeon hydroelectric power station made this century. Yet today, these old projects still account for the majority of electricity in the country, even as demand has increased. But it's not just this lack of investment that's the issue, but more the historical reliance on the Soviet Union to provide specialists and equipment to repair this aging infrastructure. A reliance that North Korea was dependent on and very much unprepared for the eventual dissolution of the Soviet Union. The 1990s were a challenging period for North Korea. The dissolution of the Soviet Union, along with the assistance and aid they were providing to North Korea, meant that the country was growing increasingly isolated. This alongside the death of the country's long-standing leader Kim Il-sung meant that North Korea was truly entering a new era. When Kim Jong-il took over the country, he was faced with societal unrest. The nation he inherited was suffering from famine, an economic crisis, and electricity shortages contributing to the prior two issues. The new leader knew that his country was struggling, and made it a key priority to develop a nuclear weapons program as a way of ensuring that his regime would be harder to challenge from the outside. But the need for more electricity, which was exacerbating the nation's issues, was evident. The leadership began planning to take advantage of the country's mountainous terrain and expand their hydroelectric power infrastructure to help solve their dire energy shortages. At the centre of this plan was the Huichon hydroelectric power station, eventually completed in 2012 with the goal of supplying baseload electricity to the capital of Pyongyang. But this project didn't go as planned, facing multiple hurdles and ultimately became an archetypal case study for the issues that North Korea's energy infrastructure was facing. Today, a multitude of factors are responsible for North Korea's constant failure to supply electricity to its citizens. The Wichon hydroelectric power station, which was meant to supply half of Pyongyang's electricity, has suffered chronic structural problems that severely limit its electricity production. 
This is a trend seen with much of the country's energy infrastructure, where the old technology simply struggles to keep up with current demands. But this problem is compounded with a seemingly seasonal based issue. Some estimates suggest that hydropower contributes up to 76% of all electricity produced in North Korea, and whilst on the surface the domestic generation of low emission electricity seems like a good thing, in reality this situation poses significant challenges for the country's grid. North Korea is susceptible to harsh winters, where temperatures usually range between minus 7 to minus 23 degrees Celsius. This can cause many of the country's rivers to partially freeze, thus limiting water flow to its various hydropower stations. This decreased flow causes the power station turbines to turn at a slower speed, ultimately reducing power output. The leadership, when faced with this problem, quickly prioritises the thing that has kept the Kim dynasty in power for three quarters of a century, and therefore reroutes whatever power they do have to the country's arms and manufacturing infrastructure. Reports from people in the country state that the 1 in 4 people that do have access to electricity in normal times are often limited to just a few hours of electricity usage per day, meaning that appliances like laundry machines and electric heaters are all unusable. But this problem is beginning to affect the country more than in just the winter months. Mass deforestation since the 1950s to turn the country's forests into farmland has led to the rise of severe weather phenomena like droughts and flooding, both of which further affect the flow of water to the country's hydroelectric power stations. North Korean electricity exports are one of the few industries that has not been sanctioned, so ironically, despite the nation's lack of power, they are actually huge exporters of electricity to China, forming a key revenue stream for the country. In 2021, North Korea sold 413 gigawatts of electricity to China for nearly $17 million, and it's unknown if this was excess electricity or not. Many citizens have tried to solve the electricity problems themselves by using small-scale solar cells at home, but these are only good for powering single appliances at certain times of the day and are by no means a solution. The root of the country's issues will remain unless these core problems are addressed, but under the country's leadership and economic isolation, these problems will inevitably reach their natural conclusion, and be hidden under the rug away from the prying eyes of the world. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more on energy and geopolitics, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to be notified of future videos.